Good morning. My name is James Worley. I'm with ECSO here in Tallahassee, and I'm going to be doing today's weekly Wednesday webinar. Today's webinar is on the FDOT Geopack drainage VBAs. What I'm going to do is go over the uh, drainage tabulation area, tabulation, uh, spread tabulation, storm tabulation, VBA, uh, how it works, um, some of the problems that people have been having with it and how to fix those problems or at least what's causing those problems and uh, then I'll also move into the summary of drainage structures VBA. The first thing that you're going to want to do when uh, trying to use any of these VBAs is to make sure that you have the Geopack drainage application open and that you are in a valid Geopack drainage project file. Once you have that open and loaded, you're going to need to make sure that you activate a valid network within that project. Any network will suffice because once you get into the VBAs, if the network is specific to the report you're running or the output that you're getting, you'll have an option to select your network at that time. Now that we have the project open, we're going to activate a network. The only one in this particular example is Pond1. Once I have that network active, I can then go into utilizing the Geopack VBAs. The first one we're going to deal with is drainage tabulation. This is an update to what the old system had, which was two separate VBAs, one that did the spread tab and area tab, and a separate one that had the generate storm sewer tab. This VBA, all it requires you to do is to give it the GDF file that you're going to be working on and to select the network that you're wanting to report on. Now once you have that, then you can fill in all of your state road description, county, and other information specific to your job. When you have that information filled in, you can save that information to a file. That file is going to have an SPS extension and you can save that anywhere you want to. If, you, if you're doing your drainage work in the roadway directory, you can save it there. If you're doing your drainage in the drainage directory, you can do it there. All this does is save what's in all these boxes so that you can call it up later if you need to rerun the reports. Now you can generate a spread tabulation report, an area tabulation report, or a storm sewer tabulation report just by clicking on any of these buttons. I'll go ahead and do a storm, hit the save button, and it's done generating the report. Now to look at that report, you can go to here and see what's in the report that you've just generated. This is now ready for you to print out and utilize in your drainage project documentation. And of course, it's always a good idea to go over it and check and make sure everything looks the way it should for uh, what you're expecting. To generate the spread tab the same way, you just click the button, name it, and save it. it tells you done. You can look at it the same. Just go in here, and there's the spread report we just generated. I want to show you guys one of the problems that's been happening with these since the MR4 release. There were a couple of files that were sent out that basically had some incorrect information in them that caused this not to work. These three files that I just highlighted used to be you had to generate these three files separately from the VBA. You had to go through the reports interface and generate each of these CSV files separately for each time you wanted to run an individual network and you had to go to the project drop down and do an export preferences to ASCII to export this drainage press DRP. What the new VBA allows is that users don't have to remember to do that, but it also allows the user with multiple networks to actually change the network without having to exit the VBA. The old way you would have to exit the VBAs, whether you were doing the spread and area tabs or the storm sewer tabs, you would have to exit that VBA, regenerate those report files, and then open those VBAs again. 
and you would have to do this each time you changed networks. Now if you're changing a network, all you do is generate the report you need for the first network, then come back to this drop down and choose another network which will bring up the verification box, which then you have to make sure to choose the same network in that verification box. Click OK, and it regenerates those reports for you. Now, OK, there's one other thing I wanted to show here uh, before I leave this subject. If when you hit the button to generate one of your reports, you get this error that then when you hit the debug shows you this line, that means those two files that it was expecting to find within the directory are not there. The reason for this currently happening is that two files were included with the MR that were outdated. The way you can solve that problem manually is to go to Reports, Builder. When the Builder comes up, go to the Report File, Open, navigate to your FDOT VBA directory and modify these two files. What happened was the version of this file that went out did not have this name correct in this part of the dialog box. Same thing with the storm. It has the incorrect information here Therefore, it saves an incorrectly named CSV file that the VBA can't read. If you want to manually fix this problem, all you have to do is make sure that when you look at this report builder and open those files, the one for the spread tab format has spread report.csv and the one for the storm tab format has storm report.csv in this box. If you manually type those in to the ones that are incorrect and save them, then the VBA start the VBA over basically the VBA should run without problems at that point. Okay, I think that's about everything on that particular VBA. I'll move on to the next VBA that I'm going to show today. And that VBA is the FDOT Summary of Drainage Structures VBA. Now for that one, you're going to need a file to plot that information into. So what you're going to need to do is go to the drainage Create Edit File. Make sure that you're in the Drainage Design Files. Find the Summary of Drainage Structures file and create it. And open that file. OK. Now, now that you're in this file, what you're going to need to do is make sure, yet again, that you have an active project open with a network active, then start the VBA. This VBA has two parts, the Create Excel Spreadsheet portion and the import Excel spreadsheet into the current design file. The reason this is broken into two parts is because only people that use Geopack drainage can use the first part. This part requires a GDF file. It reads the GDF file and then makes an Excel spreadsheet with all the the structures within that uh, database plotted into the into the the uh, Excel spreadsheet. 
the import Excel spreadsheet is basically a tool that you can use with a properly formatted Excel spreadsheet to plot it into a drawing file. The one important thing that I said there is a properly formatted spreadsheet. Um, it will not just take any spreadsheet that you have and plot it into the file. The VBA actually looks for the formatting in the spreadsheet and that includes the borders around the cells that it's trying to plot into the file. Those have to be consistent with the seed file that is supplied by us but you can use that seed file to manually enter information into the spreadsheet and then have that spreadsheet plotted into your file. That being said, let's go ahead and give it a GDF to work on. Basically navigate to the current GDF, that's an important thing, the current GDF that you have and then create the spreadsheet. It again asks you for a name. and a place to save it. Hit the Save button and it adds the information to the spreadsheet. It then opens Excel for you and brings the spreadsheet up. Now you'll notice these numbers in the station field are extremely small. That doesn't, don't, don't worry about that. The numbers are accurate, they're what they're supposed to be and when they're plotted to the file the VBA will make them the same size as all the rest of the text within the spreadsheet or the drawing. First thing I do is go ahead, select everything, and then maximize out the uh, columns. But one thing you're going to run into is it's not WYSIWYG, so what you see here is not what you're going to get on the other end when you plot it to the file. So far that's pretty consistent with all the VBAs that we have that plot things into the files. Um, the, there's not a very consistent uh, transfer of you know the width of this column and the width of this text that's in the column. So the best thing to do is kind of grab, if, if like this one you have three columns that are part of this section, grab all three columns and spread them out a little bit like that. If you have two columns like this one, The value you're seeing there in the width is the per column. So when I did that as 12, this ended up 24 wide. further with that one. I think it's going to wrap if I don't. And this one's always hard to get, so... Okay, once you finish that, if you need to, you can put remarks in the remarks field. After you've got your remarks in place, you need to save it. Once you've saved it in the 
configuration that you're wanting to use for your plotting, come back in here and use the Import Excel Spreadsheet into Current Design section. You can put a sheet prefix on your sheet number and a starting sheet number as well. So if I want to start at 100, I can do so. Now, once you've got that in place, you're ready to draw the spreadsheet into the current file. Just click on the button, choose the spreadsheet, and it starts the process of importing the information. After you've plotted it into the file, you'll notice here that because it ran off this side of the uh, border, it created another one over here, another sheet, which it repeated the uh, structure number, station side, description, and barrels columns, and then continued out to the remarks column uh, on this particular uh, sheet. You'll also notice that it used the prefix and the starting sheet number that I asked it to. It also put the uh, suffix B for uh, the second drawing in the first row. So if you have a summary that runs, you know, three wide, four wide, five wide, it'll take care of that. Also, if the summaries have more than will fit vertically, it will do a grid going down and over as well. So no matter how many structures you have and how many variable types of structures you have, you'll always be able to get uh, them plotted onto a set of borders that you'll be able to use within your drawing set. These numbers are compatible with Sheet Navigator. You can use Renumber in Sheet Navigator to manipulate them and reorder the sheets if you need to or renumber the sheets as you need to. Uh, to show you an example of what I'm talking about with that, I have a GDF that had a quite a large number of uh, structures in it. And this is a set, as you see, that has multiple vertical and horizontal uh, borders plotted into the set. You'll notice that the uh, set before the last sheet only has a sheet summary down here and then the last sheet will always have sheet summary as well as a final summary for all of the columns within the uh, report. It also continues using the prefix and suffixes to indicate which column within the set it belongs to. And as I say, all of that is compatible with the Sheet Navigator product. So you can do renumbering and reordering if necessary. Thank you guys for attending today. I hope I was helpful in showing you some of the things that we've got for you uh, as far as the drainage VBAs are concerned. Have a wonderful day. and. Uh, let me know if you need anything.